Hey guys, Qwerty Afro here, bringing you another video. Happy New Year as well. Um, I'm really sorry that I didn't uh, post anything uh, after that. Um, but I hope you, everyone has had a lovely New Year. Hope you um, spent uh, enjoyed time being with your families over Christmas and just you know just having a nice little relaxing time. Hope everyone's enjoyed the food as well. I know I have. Well, actually, no. To be honest, I've pretty much like I put on weight, but then I kind of lost it. Lo lost it by the time I literally got back. Um, so, like I don't know. My my body molds very very fast. So, like I put a bit of weight on, then it just pretty much just disappears. Anyway, uh, look at here. We have the Class Three Eight Seven London Overground, and it is released today, the eighth of January. Um, which is really weird because there was a preview stream of uh, of this train yesterday at like 9.30 and the guy who was streaming it said that this it, it was still in very work in progress and uh, it it's then close to the final uh, like you know edition but not 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 near and then they release it today so I was just like well why did you lie like you were obviously that was the full bill there that the person was previewing uh, maybe me some tweaks that there was like the black doors from the passenger view, but that was been rectified, which is good. But um, I don't know. I, I do like the stream idea, though. I think that's a really good idea to get more people interacting with the stream. But if it's just going to be a preview stream, I don't really like just, you know, what's the point of just previewing a scenario that's going to be in it? Uh, I do a stream and like get people's views and feedback of what they're seeing. And that then can help like make the product better. So people that spend the the big money on the DLC get something that's you know that they've actually put some input as well into instead of just like thinking okay that's good let's shove it out on the shelves anyway let's get into this uh, scenario um, before that um, special shout out goes to Mate Bartos Bartos uh, I need to um, tell him that I do know his brother Andre because um, he uh, he's a a viewer that um, actually knows one of my best friend's friends but well, he's a friend to me as well um, called Andre and he has a little brother called Mate and he didn't believe that his brother knew me um, so yeah I do know him and uh, there's your little shout out Mate, I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching my videos I heard that you're a very keen viewer so uh, thank you thank you for watching and um, there's your little shout out there the regular two shout outs go to Radio, Radio Alex HM and EMT or EM Line T as it's kind of like spelt out and uh, yeah those are shout outs um, again Radio Alex HM and EMT their links and stuff will be down below show them some love and uh, thank you Mate for watching as well there's your little shout out okay let's get into the scenario you're currently at Crystal Palace platform 4 your departure time is 1828. Open the doors and allow passengers on board before you depart. Your scheduled stops are Sid, um, Sydenham, Sydenham. I probably am saying it, I always keep saying that wrong. Forest Hill, Honor Oak Park, Brockley, New Cross Gate, and Surrey Keys. 9B52 is delayed and leaving uh, Sydenham soon, but you have to follow it all the way along Surrey, uh, to Surrey Keys. Okay, so we're going to be behind something. I'm going to have to put our wipers on immediately because the, red, uh, the weather out there is shocking. Um, should we have a look at that? Oh, look at this. this. This is good. Let's open the doors. This is good. Like, you know, I... Oh. Ooh, well, before we get into there, that's, that's another good part, but... Just, can we just take a minute, guys, and just look at this? This is just... Oh, oh, I thought it was the five car version. It's only four. Look at this. This is really nice. And as and as I've been saying, like this is probably my most anticipated train because this is the train that I've probably travelled on the most in my life, probably. And you just have a bit more of a connection with a train that you've like you know spent most of your time on traveling when you like use trains and stuff like that and if you're a person like me and like everyone watching i know if you like trains like if you have a train that you go on all the time it's just a bit more special when it's in the game because you can drive it and you just can like interact with it and it's just like oh my god i've i've, I've been on this train I've, I've, it, it's you know, it's, it just has a bit of a connection to you. Like some other trains that I've been on a few times, I don't really get that kind of connection when I play them in game, but trains that I've been on a lot, they're the ones I have, yes, when it's in game. Uh, oh, I just love that kind of feeling. 
Yeah, well, we're departing Crystal Palace. We're obviously going to Surrey Keys. I'll just look at it there. I'll just see going in the background. Beautiful. Oh, just makes. Oh my god, but it's also a career scenario, so there's going to be points and stuff like that, so be prepared for the negatives. Uh, we're not going to do negatives. We're going we're gonna to be nice and positive. Try and get a nice gold star. But yeah, uh, just the cabin inside looks pretty much the same. Uh, you don't have the speed restriction thing, the, the setup speed, the cruise control thing, because obviously it's just a short city stopping service train. It's not like uh, the Southern 377s or the F FCC 7, uh, 377s. They need obviously the kind of you know, higher speeds and the drivers can set the stuff like that. But this train, it shouldn't have it. They're always stopping and starting. So, but yeah, the cab's pretty much the same. Uh, you know, you have different upholstery, uh, orange bars, of course. It's all good. I like it. It's 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 nice, and it's just oh, I'm just so glad that I can be able to play this because I've just gone on the wall every day for like two years straight, and just being able to play in game is just it's such a nice feeling. And then like you know, outside, outside, I think outside's the best part of this train personally. Like it's it looks really good, and I'm just like really glad it's in the game. It just looks really nice. The sounds are recycled. I'm not gonna sit here and lie and like be like, oh, the sounds are so, you know, next gen. But um, yeah, the sounds are obviously recycled off the say 377. But I'm not really too, you know, I'm not too fussed about that because uh, they're all these trains pretty much sound the same. The kind of Electra Star series, they're all pretty much sound similar. Uh, but if if Doctor Games could go a little bit more deeper and more in detail, which I don't think they can right now in this engine, but it, with sound is actually a different thing. I think sound they could definitely work on a little bit more better than they're currently. But I would say sound is something that they definitely have to prove because it's sad that we have to get things from third-party developers instead of um, Doctor Games giving it to us straight from the bat on a game. And that's one thing that I think like users and me find a little bit annoying that it's like you doctor games are only giving us like basically a demo and then we have to buy extra stuff to kind of make it more of a fuller game which is a bit annoying in some in some in some sense and it, it's that's what i just find a bit annoying about it like you know it's it's a game but it's not a full game and then we like when we get like a bit of dlc which is good and then when we get that DLC, it's not really full as it should be. That's why you have other third, market, uh, third party developers making skins uh, that are more realistic with scenarios. Um, you have, you know, stuff like Armstrong Powerhouse, which make great sound packs. Uh, like, why does that have to be? Why can't Dotto Games just do it straight off the bat? That's why it's, it's just something which would be cool if they did. Anyway, we're here at Sydenham. Sidden, Sydenham, I think it is Sydenham, Sydenham. I, I think it's Sydenham. Sydenham. It's not Sydneyham. That's definitely it's not that. People always correct me when I say that. Right. <clears throat> so we're outside, looking good. And if we also uh, left the not the best to last, but look at this passenger view, guys. Oh my. The rain particle is actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. You have. A TS 2015 logo, and I think I've actually seen one on these trains. I've actually seen one as an advert, like a uh, train simulator 2015 advert, which is actually pretty cool. And it's raining inside. That's brilliant. <laughs> anyway, let's let's head off. But yeah, the the interior is really nice. I really do like it. You can see through the whole carriage, and if you, you actually have some more views as well, you can actually see through the whole carriage. And that's how it is in real life, and it's great that they're kind of interacting with those kind of um, um, trains and stuff that can actually do this. It's really nice. So now I can actually just see the, I can just see the whole train, um, and it's a really actually cool experience in real life. Just looking down here at the like carriages, it's really cool seeing the whole train, like it turning and bends and stuff like that. It's really and I, I think most trains should be like this for like cities because it definitely does increase the space and it increases the food. It'd be just cool if we had like some station announcement, um, like you know, some 
announcements inside of the onboard display and stuff like that. That would just be next level goodness. Okay, it starts doing that. The brakes are really good on this train. Like, I mean, they can they can put up with the kind of you know stuff I do. <laughs> so you know, and and we're approaching this train station with the kind of dirt on the track. I still don't get why it's there. It's like, was there like you know? A little bit of an earthquake and then just spillage everywhere, I don't know. Let's just get up here. We'll go and investigate outside. Actually, one thing we can actually I can show you guys is from now in the um, in the interior shot you can actually see the doors open. Which is something like I was like, wow, Dovetail Gains have unlocked new life. They've actually thought, you know what? Like, why don't we put this in finally? <laughs> and they finally have. What would have been actually cool is if you actually see here, you can see these like LED lights. It would have been cool when the doors open if these LED lights could have turned on. Maybe the engine probably can't handle that. But I'd definitely like to see something like that kind of immersive detail in like the next gen game that they're creating. But yeah, doors can now open in passenger view, which is Oh my god, revelation, because I always, like in some videos, I would um, stay in passenger view, and then when I stop at a station just to like give it a nice effect, I would then go onto free cam, uh, ooh, ooh, wow, that, that, that wasn't good, uh, I would go onto the free camera, and just to make it look like the doors are closing, but it's good now that I can just stay in passenger view, and it's all good, it just opens fine, like I don't get why couldn't that actually have just been put in the game quite some time ago, it's a bit annoying, but good that it's been done. Anyway, uh, yeah, so passenger view. What do you guys, comment, comment down below and tell me what you think. This is just, I think it's just a great passenger view. And what the hell is this woman wearing? Uh, and I think, whoa, she, how is she even sitting? I think it's a good thing to, look at that. She's going to get a bad back there. Anyway, let's head back to the to the helm, to the cab. You also have the signal button as well that I keep forgetting to do when we get to the stations. Which is actually weird because uh, none of these services have guards anymore. And even like, I was like, uh, the, if anyone was in the preview stream of this, uh, I was just, uh, I was just having so much fun in the preview stream, just like, you know, just going at it. With it, like I, I was actually like, even talking to non-viewers about it as well. I was talking to non-viewers and just uh, and, and like uh, you know getting to see what they think about it and whatever. And I think I'm gonna overrun here. No, don't do this to me. At least let freak. Oh, actually, to be honest, this is the best train to overrun in because technically you can just open the doors and people can just walk down in the carriages and just get out like that. That's perfect, isn't it? Like, you know, guys, I didn't fail here. This is a good demonstration of what a train like this can do now for dri shitty drivers. I'm not saying that I'm a shitty driver or anything, but I'm just demonstrating here. I'm a very good demonstrator, you see. <laughs> I, I just I just know how to show you guys, for, like, the perfect shot of, like, you know, a perfect video of a train, of, like, what it's, its capabilities. And this is a very good capability. This is my kind of train. This is why I like it as well. Which is actually weird because I did actually have an experience with this. Um, I had an experience with this train, um, but it where it overran at a station. But I think it actually overran fully. Like I don't think a single carriage made it on the platform. It was. It was. I'm not gonna be sexist or anything, but it was a woman driver. I'm not saying that women drivers are bad or anything like that, but it was a woman driver. Just to make, just to describe this story fully. And it was a, I think it was a Russian guard when one, when the uh, guards were still on the uh, London Overground services. Currently, there's no guards. It's just all like a driver-only operation. But there was a, yeah, there was a Russian guard and there was a woman driver, and uh, it started to drizzle. And I think it was at West Brompton. She just overran the whole station, and I was like, what the hell? like that, that's just, just so weird. It, 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 she literally came in so fast. And uh, we kind of we were around and we kind of stopped and we kind of just waited there for five ten minutes. And I thought, okay, could she just reverse the train back? It's no, no biggie. But it turns out that you can't. Like the signal, like uh, the thing is with like the overground track is 
message you can't reverse a train. Like, because the signalling won't allow it. The signalling only um, kind of only allows one direction of flow. If, it, if, if something goes back, it kind of in a way breaks the whole system, or it just the system doesn't like it. So literally, we stood there and we we're like waiting, like oh, why can't you just even open the door? I think I think maybe a bit of the back was still on the station, but it was it, it looked like we pretty much all overran it. And then the, the Russian guard came on because like normally the guard uh, the guards would do all the announcements, the train drivers would just sit in their cab and relax basically. Uh, and he came on. He was like, "Oh, this is a very unfortunate uh, overrun we have done, but uh, the signal man has told us we cannot go back into station. So you must uh, change at next stop and uh, just go back the other way with another train." And I just felt so sorry for the people that wanted to get off there. Like it was just like such a, a sad occasion for the people that actually wanted to, you know, get off at that station. And, it's it's so odd because I, I don't know. Like it was, it was just it was a funny experience and a weird experience. Those doors really do close too fast, and actually inside in the um, uh, passenger view, the doors close slower than like on the outside, which is interesting. But yeah. A nice underground whistle. Two-tone horn whistle. All good. But yeah, as a, like I do like the. I, I just like this train, and I'm really happy it's in the game. I can't stress this enough. And hopefully, this now will mean that the London Underground Network is maybe in pro in, in, in development. I don't know because if you're gonna if you're gonna put if you're gonna put these trains in then you basically add in half the ingredients for what it takes to do a whole London um, overground network, pretty much. Let's actually go into the passenger view. I just want to stay here and just kind of drive the train and train into the passenger view to be honest. Like, the passenger view is just so good and it's just really nice to kind of... And I like that there's actually different camera modes. It's not a lot. Like, it's nothing groundbreaking. Cross gate and the doors open. Oh, it's great. I'm just it's so weird actually just being in passenger view because always in passenger view you're like, oh the doors aren't gonna open, better go into you know, exterior camera mode or free cam mode, you know. <laughs> but it's great that they do. I think it's just such a lovely addition. It's terrible weather outside. I've actually been to this gas station here, or petrol station. I've been to this place here, and I've actually like, like when I was, I was here with my car, I think, and then I was just looking over there and looking at the trains and stuff like that, and I was like, oh my god. And then when the South London network came here, when I came to this stop, I was just like, I was here, and I was like, oh my god, I was here. Does anyone else do that? Does anyone else like find a spot in Train Simulator and um, like if they did it, if they were at that spot in real life, and then they just go to it in Train Simulator and try and recreate it from there? Does anyone else do that? Or is it just being? I think a lot of people do. Anyway, now we're going to go across this really nice little bridge. You know, the bridge that leads to all those going the tracks. They were building the whole network up. Is there anything behind us? I don't think there's anything behind us. We're good. We're good to go. Anyway, there was a train in front of us, but he's managed to, you know, get far enough in front that we he's not really become a problem anymore, which is nice. Going up this interesting incline. Oh, that's a over the over the nice bridge. Passenger view is here. Oh, I thought that was a signal. It's probably just a speed change. What is that? Is that? Oh yeah, well, now we're in the like depot area as well. Which is pretty cool. This is the London Overground Depot. And of course, we're gonna actually. 
actually go underneath the, um, on the southeast of branch and that, and then over there is actually a new cross, and I think that is a train to new cross, which is quite nice to see. But what, what else was I talking about? Like, I was talking about the in, uh, like um, interior like onboard announcements. It just would be so cool. Imagine right here, the train which could be just now saying, "Oh, the next station has some keys for this train." Or it doesn't tell me that. But, you know, that would be just so cool. And they have the licensing as well, so why couldn't they do it? Again, something maybe to question about the engine, maybe that can't handle it. I just like, I, I just like, literally, I could write a book about how many things need to be corrected or how many things that need to be put into the next gen version of Train Sim, so, you know. <laughs> you know. I have to go down to 30. A bit sloppy here with speeds. What drive quality, really? I was braking gently. Everyone was going for a nice bumpy ride. Sorry, Keys. Last stop. Good little journey. Like, I don't really feel that this loco has been, you know, it's it, it, there's not much you can do on the South London network because it's obviously not primarily just for the overground. It's mainly Southern and Southeastern. And uh, it's just, this is just a little bit of it that you can, you know, go, you don't get a full route with this train. You only get, um, like, little bits that you can do on this, uh, on this map. But it's definitely a good start, and I, I hope that they develop on with the London the London Overground, and I hope that it becomes something more. I want the whole network. I will pay anything to, you know, have the whole network in, and I wouldn't mind them releasing it as, like, a whole pack. Like, a whole... Uh, the whole Overground network, all the branches and stuff, as one, like, you know, mega pack. And I wouldn't, I would go like 50, 50, 40 quid. I'd pay for that because that's a nice chunk of DLC. And we already have the trains for it. Like we have all the trains we need. Okay, maybe we don't have one of them. We don't have the um, the Turbo Star uh, for the Gospel Oak line. But include that in as well. And that would be just such a juicy bit of DLC. Because I know a lot of people would love it. And I think it would just be cool. And that would be actually like a nice, complete. You know, there's not many, there's not many um, routes and stuff that are actually complete in Train Sim. There's lo like loads of things that are a little bit broken off and whatever. Like the Isle of Wight is complete. I um, can't remember off the top of my head. There's there's, a, there's not many, there's not much stuff in also in the UK that is like a complete route. So if they did the whole overground, it'd be something really cool to have like as a a whole route. Anyway, we only managed to get to. Did we get to Silver? I don't think we did. Is it because we? Sp uh, and I keep putting it into emergency brake all the time sometimes. Uh, it's just at the end there, a little bit of drive quality issues, but it's alright. I'm not really too fussed. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the 378. I would definitely pick it up if you like London Overground or like just you know madly obsessed with it. Definitely get ads to the South London network and as it as it's already a really good map by itself, adding this to it would just be really cool for like better realistic AI etc yeah that's 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 really it um I hope they do more stuff with the London Overground in the future as I've been talking about and uh yeah I hope I, again I said as I said in the beginning of the video hope everyone had a lovely new year um sorry about the lack of videos because I'm obviously back at uni uh, getting a bit settled in uh, resettled in I should say and I'm, um, you know, revising for some exams. And but I'll definitely be doing videos in between them, and you know, keeping the the content fresh and uh, updated. And streams as well. Streams I definitely want to stream more often. I really do enjoy streaming. I just it's just it's just more like relaxing for me. Um, just you know, as I get to talk with you guys and that. So if you haven't followed already on Twitch, follow me on Twitch to be know I stream. Uh, like my Facebook page, that's like the best place now pretty much for like updates and stuff like streaming and like even videos like if you don't see them on your subscriber module on YouTube, Facebook's the best place to check for anything. I post there like when I'm, you know, want to say something or whatever or Google Plus. But yeah, like the video guys if you liked it. It shows me that you appreciate my work. And uh, yeah, uh, subscribe if you haven't 
subscribed if you want to keep up to date with the content I produce. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in another video soon, hopefully. And uh, again, um, I hope you guys had a lovely, happy new year. And um, take care, guys. I'll see you in another video. See ya. We